All right, we'd like to call to order this uh, meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. And we do have a form here. We've got all our, all our commissioners here tonight, so appreciate your, your attendance. I want to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance and Indication. If you please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity for us to gather here tonight. God, we ask for you to be with our um, residents of Cleveland County. Just keep them safe. Um, uh, keep them in your will. God, we ask for you to be with our nation tonight as we go through um, the democratic process of electing our leaders. And um, we just ask for you to guide those leaders that are elected tonight and um, uh, help them focus on the people that they serve. Thank you for um, the opportunity to be here tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> I'd start off by recognizing any elected officials. Do we have any elected officials here tonight? Any veterans that are here? If you're a veteran, if you please stand so we can recognize you. Any county department heads? Can the department heads, if you please stand and just um, let us know your name and which department you're with. Allison Mooney, Human Resources. Bill Carter, Land Director. Chris Green, Tax Administration. Ryan for the Financial Systems. Thank you. Appreciate you coming on. Commissioners, you have the, the agenda in front of you. Unless there's any change to the agenda. During this portion of the meeting, should register their name and the subject they wish to address to the county clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. Each presentation will be limited to three minutes. The board is interested in hearing your concerns, yet speakers should not expect comment, action, or deliberation on subject matter brought up during the public comment segment. Topics requiring further investigation will be referred to the appropriate county agency. And we have four people signed up to speak tonight. And uh, I'd like to start off with uh, Mr. Jim Bishop. Jim Bishop, 2539 Chelsea <coughs> Church Road, Shelby. Poker houses or casinos. Kate's poker house was outside of Kings Mountain about a mile. And as a boy, I learned booze and gambling hurt people. An old man I knew gambled there. He won a poker hand, another man lost his paycheck to him. He got up behind the old man and put a hawk bill knife to his throat, cursed him, and made him take his money, give him his money back. And the old man was run out of the place, but he came back with a revolver. He recovered his money, forced the man outside, made him kneel down in a ditch going up Park Yarn Hill, and made him root like a hog to the top of that hill, tearing his face all to pieces. Every time that man begged for mercy and asked for him to stop, the old man shot beside his head, threatening to kill him if he didn't keep going. And I learned as a little boy, you know, Welch on the gambling debt. There were, they, these were down home boys, they weren't professionals. If they took Welching on a gambling debt so serious, how much more will a professional predator take Welching on a gambling debt? Casinos give credit to regular gamblers, they help them run up a, a, a gambling debt. There's some fruit from gambling debts, which are break-ins, embezzlement, prostitution, drug addiction, robbery, broken homes, and you can go on and on. Job 4.8 says, even as I have seen they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. God's going to judge wickedness and those who support it. Isaiah 9.16 says, for the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Supporters of casinos should, should, should drive to a casino town and talk to the people there and find out what a, one of the Kings Mountain City Council members did. He drove up to one and he found out that the people who lived there tell him, they told him, said, 
You don't want a casino. Support for this is promoting something that is bent on destroying our families. You're trying to put a three-piece suit on a poker house 60 years ago. This casino will make Kate's poker house look like a Sunday school class picnic. Mark 7, 20 and 23 says that which cometh out of a man that defileth a man far for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within, and that's what defiles a man. I'd like for you to consider these things about that deceit. Thank you, Mr. Michael Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay 263 Union Church Road, Kingston, North Carolina. I want to apologize if we have to leave after I make my statements. I have a babysitter being paid by the hour, so I hope you understand. Uh, Commissioner, citizens, uh, thank you for an opportunity to speak tonight. I respectfully stand before you as a concerned citizen of Kings Mountain. I'm the assistant pastor of the Love Valley Baptist Church at 2032 Bethlehem Road in Kings Mountain, which is approximately three miles from the side of the proposed casino that's been invited to come to our county. I'm a Christian, I'm a husband, a father, and a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm here tonight not only to represent myself, my wife, my four children, in some capacity, the over 400 members of Love Valley Baptist Church, then also to represent the 300 adults, teenagers, and small children that we send buses to every Sunday afternoon to pick up and bring to church, many of whom would not have transportation to and from church otherwise. I noticed that in most meetings like this, this meeting, the other council meetings, an opening prayer is usually prayed in Jesus' name. I can only assume that, uh, that if not all, then partially uh, our commissioners believe in God and not just God, but the Lord Jesus Christ. That being said, uh, we must not rely on what we think is right, but what the Bible says is right. I'm also aware that some of our commissioners were even elected based on their Christian beliefs and stance. The Bible says in Proverbs 14 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. That, that simply means that we're prone to make decisions thinking that we're doing the right thing when in the end, in all actuality, it may end in a, in a road of destruction, a path of destruction. I'm afraid that we as humans tend to lean on our own wisdom in decision making. And I hope you realize that your decision as commissioners is meant to reflect our will as the people of Cleveland County. Proverbs 3 and verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. As a Christian, I understand that I am not my own, but I believe uh, that I belong to, and I am an extension of the God of this universe. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6.20, You are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I respectfully and humbly ask you to retract your name and support from the letter inviting the casino to come to Kings Mountain in Cleveland County. If not for me, for my family, if not for them, the 400 members of Love Valley, if not for them, the additional 300 bus riders, a number that will no doubt increase if that casino comes to Kings Mountain, retract your name if for no other reason than for Jesus' sake. Everywhere I put my name as a Christian, I'm also putting the name of God as well. Thank you. Karen Clark. Mark 35, Jerry Lane, Shelby. I wanted to read some quotes from the Founders Bible. It uh, has some quotes from our Founding Fathers. Uh, Franklin pointed out that the proper means of gaining wealth was through industry and frugality, that is, hard work and savings. The Founders regularly identified gambling as a dangerous, easy money allurement. allurement. For this reason, Founding Father James Iredale, a ratifier of the U.S. Constitution placed on the U.S. Supreme Court by President George Washington, told his brother, there are two very dangerous vices against which I must particularly caution you, gaming and drinking. The incitement to the first is the hope of gain. Now, how many men have made fortunes by gaming, or have any? And how many have been ruined by it? Millions. God forbid any friend of mine should add to the number. I would point at a gaming house as a place of utter destruction. 
The founding fathers recognized that gambling was not a, an evil that traveled alone. It kept company with other evils, and they listed many of them. For example, Declaration signer ben Benjamin Rush pointed out, this madness of gambling is a of a destructive tendency and often conducts persons afflicted with it to poverty, imprisonment, and an ignominious or a sudden shameful death. George Washington identified other bad consequences, telling his nephew, avoid, avoid gaming. This is a vice which is productive of every possible evil, equally injurious to the morals and health of its followers. It is the child of avarice, the brother of in inequity, and father of mischief. It has been the ruin of many worthy families, the loss of many a man's honor, and the cause of suicide. In a word, few gain by this abominable practice, the profit, if any, being diffused, while thousands are injured. Notice the, that the founders attested that gambling's, gambling's injurious and detrimental effects were visible in the areas of morals, health, family strength, and financial income, and that gambling also produced poverty, imprisonment, and suicide. Statistics now demonstrate that every one of these negative results listed two centuries ago is still a modern consequence of gambling. For example, the suicide rate is higher than any other behavior group. They experience mood disorders at a rate three times higher than those who are not regular gamblers and higher rates of depression. Rates of physical and sexual abuse are 16 times higher. Gambling is the fastest growing cause of bankruptcy. The arrest rate is three to five times higher. The divorce rate is two to three times higher. Both felony crimes and child abuse rose 40% and domestic violence and assaults rose 80% after casinos opened in Deadwood, South Dakota. Suicides increased by 213% after casinos opened in Gulfport, Mississippi, and they rose by 1,000% after casinos opened in Biloxi, Mississippi. Clearly, there are numerous negative societal effects from gambling. It is therefore not surprising that for every dollar a government takes in from gambling, it spends $1.90 in dealing with its consequences. To me, that right there is enough to retract your support. It's not really the money-making thing that is promoted as. I mean, the consequences are going to far outweigh the benefit. Thank you, Smart. After Virginia. Adam 4K1005, Serenity Wood, Bessemer City. Thank you, commissioners, for the opportunity to address you tonight. I suspect you have wondered why I keep speaking out against your decision to welcome a casino to town. I have also heard it said that I must have a lot of nerve questioning the actions of the county's leaders. As far as why I won't go along with your actions, let me quote Kelly Weasel. There may be times when we are powerless to prevent injustice, but there must never be a time when we fail to protest. So I'm here tonight to make a couple of observations and finish with a question. My first observation is I believe that several of you wish that you had made a different decision last year when approached with this issue. I am sure at the time you got caught up in the moment and truly believed the casino would be a good thing for the county. I believe some of you were uncomfortable with the secrecy involved, but went along because of the benefits you believed would accumulate to the community as a whole. However, as time passed and some facts have come to light, I believe some of you have changed your positions and would decide differently should the question arise today. In most cases, you cannot go back and undo a decision. Luckily, in this case, that remedy is available to you, which leads me to my question. Which one of you who has changed your mind will be brave enough to step out of line and join Councilman and Tommy Hawkins in Kings Mountain? Do you know or suspect that you have enough like-minded commissioners pass a retraction letter on the majority. So what is holding you back? Why do you continue to go, not only against your own better judgment, but against the wishes of the people you represent? I'm gonna finish with one more quote. This is from Henry T. Blackaby, a very well-known and prolific Baptist preacher, writer. God doesn't want people to do what they think is best. He wants them to do what he knows is best, and no amount of reasoning and intellectualizing on your part will discover that. Do you really think God believes a casino to be best for Kings Mountain? Thank you. Thank you. All right, Commissioners. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda. After that, I'll turn it over to our county manager. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Several items this evening for your consideration. First would be our board minutes from the October 21st meeting. I've got uh, one budget amendment, budget 
budget amendment number 19, and that is from our sheriff's office. And it is a budget amendment in the amount of $2,654. And this will allow the sheriff's office to budget funds received from the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant. This grant award will be used to purchase ammunition for the department. I have got three uh, remaining items under the consent agenda. All three of those items board are in our health department and all have to do uh, with current policies, uh, fees uh, to guide the health department accordingly. Item C is our financial eligibility fee collection policy. This is an annual update to the health department fee collection policy that has already been approved by the health director and the board of health and they're seeking your approval this evening. These are minor changes this year to include a definition of a new patient, adding information on electronic medical records, new clinic requirements for income and residency, inclusion of the student options, begin with intervention and recovery into a slight uh, fee scale. So this is a policy that they use on a daily basis and these are, uh, this is an annual review of this policy and these uh, changes are for your consideration. Item D, Health Department, is elimination of environmental health non-compliance fees. Or this is an example of a local fee, local ordinance that has been in, uh, in place for Cleveland County and the health board is recommending that we eliminate this non-compliance fee. And the reason is that it now overlaps with a North Carolina state law on on-site wastewater uh, contractor inspection certification board and their ability and oversight authority under state law to deter property owners from negatively impacting their septic, septic systems and wells. And so now because we have an overlapping state law, this would just be our county uh, looking at our local policy and aligning it consistently with state law. Finally, out of the health department, item B is a fee establishment for Carolina Access. This is a recommendation from our Board of Health to establish two new fees for the Carolina Community Health Partnership that is located at the public health department. The first fee is a $50 fee that is an individual nurse counseling uh, for sessions or individual, individual nurse counseling sessions. The second fee is a $20 fee for group diabetes education classes. Both of these fees coincide with a new activity uh, at the health department called HealthNet created to cover these fees for eligible patients. And while this is moving money within the health department from one fund to the other board, uh, if this is passed tonight, this will allow the health department to receive funding that they're not currently uh, being compensated for. So it does have a, a positive financial impact on the health department. That, is, that concludes the consent agenda. I'm happy to answer any specific questions or try to that you may have. Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back over to you. Commissioners, you heard the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Move to approve, Mr. Chairman. Can I motion to approve? Motion to approve. And a second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. All right. Down to the public hearing section of the meeting. Um, after, uh, after the public hearing has been opened, persons wishing to speak for or against the proposition will be asked to come forward and first state his or her name and address. All comments from the public are to be directed to the board. There are no comments directed at other members of the audience. If the speaker has a question, that, uh, that question is to be directed to the chair. No one will be allowed to speak at the hearing more than once unless the chair recognizes the speaker a second time for rebuttal of information brought forth after the speaker has spoken. The original presentation by a speaker will be limited to no more than five minutes. The rebuttal presentation will be limited to, to no more than three minutes. And first of all, we've got two items tonight um, for public hearing. The first one is a zone text amendment. Um, and I'd like to ask Chris Mark, you can come up and let us know what we're looking at. Yeah, we've got for you to consider tonight a text amendment that was uh, proposed by the planning department. Um, 
to help bring our county code into compliance with new state statutes. And these statutes allow, or they require counties and towns now to allow a small residential unit that meets state building code in the rear yard of a primary home. And it's the purpose is to help to allow people to care for a disabled, physically disabled, physically or mentally disabled resident or relative. Um, Planning board recommended to approve the amendment. amendment. And uh, after getting the county attorney to review it, we did slightly change part E. Um, you should have that in your uh, packet. And the part that the planning board looked at read that uh, these units will be required to have access to uh, septic and water. And uh, his recommendation was to change that to require them to connect to septic water and electric, which is also stated in the state statutes. If you have any questions. Any questions for Chris this time? What is the difference between a temporary care resident and a temporary family health care? That's a good well, question. They're basically the same thing, aren't they? So, um, the, the difference is that we already have a temporary dependent care option that allows somebody to put a mobile home, a single lot or a double lot or behind their home with a conditional use permit from our zoning board for the district. Um, the difference is that this temporary health care structure is limited to no more than 300 square feet and it has to meet state building code for a residential, just like a house. So if they can meet that size requirement, then they can just get a zoning permit from the office. But if they want something larger, they've got to go get a conditional use permit from the zoning board. I guess my question is, and that, that would lead up to my question, that you put a permanent dwelling behind a home with a one year temporary permit, then it's canceled the next year. What do you do about the demo it? Move it out, get rid of it? Yeah, they would be required to remove it after 60 days. Yeah. So that, that's what I'm saying. Would it be more feasible to go with the first one in the long run because it's going to cost the family in the long run if they build if they build a 300 square foot house for their health care system at the end of that termination, that house has got to be restored and moved. If, if they need it, Farther than a year, we have in the yeah, but at the end, of, the end of that period of time, whatever it is, that is only good for that period of time. And after after the extent, it's, it's got to be demo. They can redo it every year if they yeah. continue to have the need. Any other questions? Yes, also, it, it cannot be affixed to a permanent foundation. It's going to be put on a slab or something like that, so it is ready to move. So it's something similar to a mobile home. It would be similar to it, yes. It doesn't have to be wheel or anything like that. It cannot, under state statute and our ordinance, be permanently affixed to the rural stuff. Any questions for you? Yeah. The um, structure that we're talking about, 300 square foot, not really that large. And, um, but I'm not concerned because a lot of families nowadays like to take care of their parents and um, they might prefer, if the labor prefers, that um, they do hands-on care instead of hospice or a nursing home or assisted living. But um, <clears throat> no one ever knows when it's, it's time for us to die, so to speak, or when they have to move into one of these special care facility. So will this be a on one continuing process where they can continue to ask for more time? Yeah, we address that in that text that uh, the permit's good for one year, but you can renew it for successive years. Um, and it even goes on to say that you've got to provide a, uh, it has to be certified by the North Carolina um, to say that this person is disabled and they do need care. 
public hearing on this side. We'll ask another one then on the next side. Commissioners? Pleasure. Are there any other discussion? Move to approve, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion to approve? I second. And second. Any other discussion? I, th I think it's good and I'm glad to hear that you said that the uh, city is going to be required because I know King's Mountain doesn't have one. We ran into this a couple of times. I would think uh, to add to that too, I would think it would be a good idea for us to ask um, our staff if they would visit with the Realtors Association, Homebuilders Association, make them aware of this change and, and how that can impact them as well. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Thank you. Chris? And it's your birthday today, isn't it? Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. What you want to say? <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I can get my uh, video recorder out. Yeah, you wouldn't want to do it. Sad. Next, you've got a uh, zoning map amendment. Um, the applicant is Scott McKinney. He's also the landowner. And uh, he's asking to rezone approximately five and a half acres from residential to rural agriculture conditional district. And that's the type of rezoning where you can place conditions on it, like the cell towers that you've seen recently. Um, this property is on Wynn Road, and it's off Cliffside Road, which is west of Bullen Springs a couple of miles. And the, the reason he's applying for this is he's wanting to open up a used auto sales at his residence. And the area around it is all residential. Um, the land use plan says the area is residential. And you've got a, you do have a recommendation, you have two recommendations, one from Isotherm, and they recommended to approve. They did note that you know you consider this spot zoning, but with the proper conditions, you can help that rezoning fit in with the area around it, to fit in with the character of the 
properties around it. And the plan will work out the same. They recommended to rezone it. And they actually came up with some recommended conditions. And I'll read those off for you. Maximum of 12 automobiles for sale at any time. Um, business parking area must be in the must be gravel. Um, they, he must obtain any required driveway permit from the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Number four is uh, the business cannot operate on Sunday. Number five, they must keep property clean, orderly, and not become a nuisance. And number six, the inventory must be parked south of the residential driveway. If you see that site plan, it shows that that would put the car, the inventory cars, around that building on the southern part of that property. And let's see if you have any questions, I can answer those. Commissioners, are there any questions for Chris this time? And looking at the foot map, is that two two parcels in one? Look like there's two parcels there. What is it right there and the other that two parcels? It, it was and he is a since recorded a plat to combine those. And I forgot to tell you, but they, they did, the plan board did talk about a couple other conditions that they didn't include those. One was lighting and one was signs. And they asked the applicant what he thought about that. And he, he told them that he didn't want signs or lighting, so they left that off. But you may want to consider putting some kind of condition on the size of sign or the type of light. Any other questions for Chris? Is that not part of the original application? Uh, those signs will cut off. Are you talking about the uh, Yeah, when he applied, the, there, had, there was actually two parcels when he submitted his application. Legally divided into one since that time. Chris, was there any uh, discussion with Adam on the, the restrictions? That yeah. the planning, was the planning department that had restrictions? Yeah, was there any discussion with them? Yeah, he was there and he, um, he agreed to file with them. Any other discussion? Chris, was there any about, um, is there anyone wishing to speak for or against um, this zoning map for now? Oh, sorry. We've got to open the public hearing on this on this topic here. And anyone wish to speak for or against? Okay, I, I am Scott McKinney. Um, just a little references to what my plan is. I retired from my job of 30 years recently, five months ago, and this is going to be a little retirement opportunity for me. So, and I combined the two partials because I think it was, the acreage wasn't enough with the one partial per requirements from the zoning board to, to have this zoning done different. So, and if you can see where it's at, there's not a lot of curb appeal as far as signs or anything, you know, that, that, that's not the type of business I'm looking to run. It's more or less something internet or, or paper sales or something. So just a little information on what my plans are. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak for or
approve it as a prod board, approve it with the conditions, and including Mr. Hutchins. <clears throat> Got a motion on the floor? I'll second with the conditions. Got a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. All right, we're down to the regular agenda now, and that's uh, we've got late applications for exemption. With that, I'll turn it over to Tax Administration, Chris Green. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, you have a uh, fairly lengthy list of, of applicants uh, for your consideration tonight. <clears throat> These uh, represent the applicants for uh, homestead exclusion. They are sorted by type, uh, DV being disabled veteran, homestead exclusion, and followed by the elderly or handicap uh, exclusion for homestead. Near the end of the list, you'll see uh, several uh, categories outside of the homestead exclusion for charitable, historic, and religious purposes. Uh, as, you, as you're familiar, these applications are typically required to be filed uh, during the, the listing period, which is January 1 through 31 each year, except for the homestead, which extends to June 1st. Uh, all of those represented on this list were submitted after the deadline. Uh, they have each been reviewed by, by our staff and do meet the criteria qualify for that particular uh, exemption uh, had it been filed timely. Uh, approval is entirely at the board's discretion. Uh, in, in the past, you, you have uh, chosen to deal with these on one motion uh, or uh, otherwise, however you may see fit. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll address that. Not associated with property tax. Uh, no, nothing associated with property tax. Well, it's an all me criteria, which you said they did. I make a motion we accept the late application. A motion to accept the late application. Is there a second? Oh. A second and third. Uh, <laughs> any other discussion? <laughs> all those in favor, please raise your right hand. We are down to commissioner's reports, and for that, I'll start down with Mr. Hawkins. We start on trip. I thought they might want me to just part of that so that I'll get to the polls and see what we can get you. Congratulations for winning and everything. But I do have two comments one about Johnny and the bow tie. <laughs> I did, I did. 
did that so you'd feel better. I've been nine and ten years trying to take the evening out of you, and that's what I told Jason today. <laughs> but uh, the other thing I was going to say is Chris and Bill would try to look into something for me. Uh, several years ago, we did. Study or what we did was we, we actually passed the standard runway zone for the airport. And I was coming in for a landing the other day, and on runway five, on the extended runway five runway, there's a cell tower there. Now, did we approve that, or did this pop up? Did you look into that thing? And I'm a happy camper coming in on the yeah, five and the cell tower at that thing. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, Maple, Maple Springs Church Road up a bit. I'm sorry? Maple Springs Church Road up Yeah, that's right. No, in that area. Yeah. That's over near uh, the church over there. Uh, but, uh, I wasn't a happy camper. <laughs> I didn't want to use the dragon in low when you got the cow sitting in that low. It fell below the morning. It, it fell below the approach zone. We did we did those extended center line, didn't we? That's right. Came out over the shelving. It's actually on our GIS now where you can you can touch, you can bring up that layer and click on a point and it will it will calculate the ground elevation and the protected approach elevation and it'll tell you the difference between the two so you can tell how much of a cell tower you can put in there or any other structure. I just make sure I won't make that person fly my plan. <laughs> Uh, we understand because he's, he looks superb, and I'm a talking partner. 